Last time on Base Funk. I got a couple of Azreel's items I'm not making use of right now because they're going to make it pretty obvious that I was part of a specific robbery. You're the leader of the lilies. I was hoping that you, this would be too much for you and you would turn it down and then I get to be the leader of the lilies, but I guess I'll just, you know, wait. I wish for you to accept this and use it as a reminder every time you draw it of my forgiveness of you. Uh, yep, I think she, I think she ta- takes her hand on the sword and just holds it quite close, quite close to her chest, I think. Mara is at Ninsen Chapel in Agarthen. Are the headmasters at Ninsen still alive and well for now? They stood up to Danto. They didn't want to fall under his thrall, so he sent some killer and she slaughtered them. Roland turns to offer the shield from his armor set to Zoe. You're going to have to spend some time training to get proficiency to actually use it. I just want you to know that if you ever need me to find something out in the future, I can. It's a mission from Penny to find out who robbed her. I am going to walk into that tower and get my husband back or die trying. Unless you and your friends get him out for me. You may be trapped in there for an eternity. But at least it would be an eternity trapped in there with her husband in some form. I leave to you my estate, my belongings, and of course, this. And she holds out the staff aloft for you to see. That's the kind of sentiment that I think will be uh, helpful as the new leader of the Lilies. And she's going to put her hand on Claire's shoulder. And sitting next to you on the bed is Lady Nim. I'm in your sword. Ganador thinks the gods want this barrier to remain up. He wants to tear it down. Out of character, but he literally just wants to troll the other gods. I mean, to be fair, you were just going to kill me and my sister. You never went to Nim and said like, hey, actually, I changed my mind. Can we get out of this deal? It was Claire who every point along the way was like, Nim's going to kill us. Nim's going to kill us. Everybody betray me. Would you care to share what you learned about the barrier? Warden Light may no longer have the relevant memories. But he is the key. He's hiding something. You will find the secret in Light's Tower. Beautiful blue lines. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. Jason Derulo. You did it wrong. It's Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I go really into it. And then you start one of the best guilty pleasure songs ever. Which one, Chris? Riding solo. You know what it is. (laughs) This might be the record for the fastest we ever get to an episode title. It's just going to be Dice Funk Part 23 featuring Jason Derulo. (laughs) Is this because of that 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 uh that remix I shared with you all during the past week? Because that is a pretty tasty remix. Uh, that's a, it's very good. It's just mostly about how he likes to yell his names at the beginning of songs. Not even at the beginning. He stopped it at the beginning. You have to listen and find out where he does it in the song now. It's like uh, a, a Where's Waldo now? I have to find it? <laughs> I think so. That's a real shame because when he used to do it at the start, we'd have known whether he was in this episode or not because by now he <laughs> would have shouted Jason Derulo. <laughs> Now, for all we know, he could just do it at any point. Listeners, if you don't realize, Jason Derulo has actually shown up in every episode of this season. Go back and listen to all the episodes to see if you could spot where he shows up. Yeah, he he, vo- he voices Wolf the Troll. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you, you can't say that. That's, oh, jeez. Oh, I ruined the secret. Oh, no. You're going to you're gonna have to bleep that out, Austin. If you don't, uh, then the mystery will be ruined. This whole conversation started because Lauren said wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, good job, me. <laughs> okay, so this is a bit of a weird episode, if you couldn't tell, because uh, for the first time in a long time, the players know a lot more about what's going to happen than I do. 
because they had all week to think about the conversation that's about to happen. And then what they decide, I just have to roll with. I, there's no way I could have prepared. So I hope you all are excited to bear that burden. <laughs> <sighs> Two questions before we start. One, mm-hmm. is Winifred going to be part of this conversation? It's kind of a double-edged sword. He might have some ideas. He might be judgmental, but it's important. Is he here or not? I would want him to be there, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not. You know what? I'm dumb. Can someone fill me in on what exactly this conversation is supposed to be about? Because I want to make sure I'm not thinking of a different one. <laughs> <clears throat> Rowan would typically want Winifred to be around anyway, just because Winifred is at least a, a, an additional voice that is not his, that is tries to be obstinately good about things, so... Yeah, no, Lore and me thinks that'd be funny. Dora would probably be worried about his delicate little tentacles. Yeah, he's very delicate. He's a fragile boy. Uh, but the second thing is that it, what exactly this conversation is going to be has several different forms, and I guess we'll explore that in a moment, but long story short at TLDR, we're definitely talking about the two missions, which is get Maximilian's mirror back mm-hmm. for Alice, and implicate somebody for the robbery that penny has a bounty out on that the, the bigger question mark is whether or not zoe wants to let all of her friends in on the nim is in her sword and talking to her thing but we're, let's just let's just find this out in play so right now everyone's at the avant-garde's headquarters on the roof probably you guys moved the table up there who wants to start winifred's there Every, everybody's there i'm taking off my glasses in real life because i'm like okay <laughs> serious time Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. You got to pause there. To defeat the Huns. I didn't want Lauren cutting me off. I'll be 100% honest. She would have jumped me. I would have. Well, I have a little information about one of our one of our jobs after talking with Alice for a bit. And it's a rather unusual job to, well, say the least. Oh boy, I'm really excited about the justice we're about to do. Give me the deep. (laughs) It's less about justice than it is about compassion is the best way to describe it. All right. Still exciting. Not my favorite, but it's up there. So I'm just going to lead off by saying effectively what the mission is. And that is Mm -hmm. Alice wants to be with her husband again. Mm. <laughs> Does Miltari do that in character? I think so. I think that's a bit of a character. <laughs> what what is it, Veltari? Oh no, you 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 finish. I no, 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 no. You made that sound for a reason. Zoe, mom and dad are fighting again. We're not fighting, we're keeping secrets from you children. (laughs) (laughs) Is it just fine for us to keep secrets from each other? Because I've been kind of a part of that already. It is when you're a grown up. The thing is, the chances of getting her reunited with her husband by way of getting, well, Bumbershoot out of his prison is a foregone conclusion, as far as we know. This is Austin. If anyone goes in the mirror, they are no longer in... Season three of Dice Funk. <laughs> you will re-roll a new character if you touch that mirror. What if we all go in together? The first season ended with a total party kill, and depending <laughs> on your interpretation, season two ended in a total party kill, so don't pretend like it's not on the table. <laughs> anyway, uh, Roland, we'll just say, this is more likely going to be a case of us getting Alice into the mirror that Bumbershoot and Maximilian are currently occupying. This is related to the other mission, and I'm going to need you all to just hear me out on a theory and a, and a thought and a, a, a scheme and a you know a plan I've got going, and just like don't panic until I'm done. We good? We good? Oh boy, my favorite sentences start with "Don't panic." We have one person who wants to go into a mirror, and we need to put someone into a mirror, and. I may have stolen those things from Penny and don't want to go into the mirror, but we have someone that wants to go into the mirror, so it's fine. Beltari. So I'm going to ignore the thing where you just admitted to a bad, bad crime for a second, because I just want to point out that if we frame Alice to put her in the mirror, she'll go in her own mirror and not her husband's mirror. And that doesn't solve the other thing. It also doesn't work from the pro- for the premise of before she's put in a mirror, Light will ask if she's committed the crime, and you know what you can't do in front of Light, right? Yeah, yeah, so I have some thoughts here. (laughs) She's prepared. We can return 
almost all of the stuff to Penny and be like, <laughs> look, we, we, we found, like, this is all your stuff, right? And just, you know, not pay attention to the one thing that I'm keeping. What's the one thing that you're keeping? Um, a gem that I'm gonna use to take control of Warden Light and to subjugate him to my will. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I'm gonna subjugate Warden Light to my will. Oh, I hate this. I hate this and I'm out. Bye. Winifred floats away. Winnie, come back, come back. You're an accessory to this now. Come back. Kiss my jelly butt. Uh, do you want me to go tell Warden Light that you're an accessory or are you gonna come back? You do not threaten Winnie. Got it? Okay, okay, I get it. I was trying to be playful. I apologize. This was this was clearly not the moment for jokey threat. Uh, Winnie, my big apologies. You may leave if you wish. Very sorry. I want to help you guys. I just don't want to do a crime. Dora's just eating popcorn now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if she went to light and said she wanted to try and rehabilitate them? Why instead of supposing what we think Warden Light will or won't do, why don't we just go to the Sanctum right now and ask him? Ugh, he's such a drag, though. Well, that's not the only thing that's kind of an issue right now. So, uh, you guys may not have gotten the, the memo. I don't know if they send out newsletters for this sort of thing. But Claire's the new leader of the Lilies now. And now we've kind of created a situation that the first major problem the Lilies have run into is someone stealing from them. And it might look kind of bad on Claire if the first thing they get back is sort of like a situation they didn't really get all they wanted out of it. Because Penny's probably going to want that other item back. Was it a good idea to make her the leader? She seems a little, uh, unstable. I... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Winifred's like, I like her. She seems, uh, very ambitious. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's the word. N no negative connotations. <laughs> Well, one question I was going to have is, who is her enforcer ever since Lyra's been taken out? She's probably going to ask me to do it, because we're, like, really tight now. Thanks, Viltari. Um. Hey, Theodora, did you just submit to be working for the Lilies <laughs> in, our family no. in our family meeting? No, we're just really good friends now, and she'd probably ask me for a favor, because we had a really good trip together, until she walked out of the room having a bad trip, and apparently it's because somebody was stealing from her right under my nose. I would have liked to know this beforehand, <laughs> but ugh. I'm going to cast Detect Thoughts. <laughs> oh, what are the surface level thoughts that I detect? Mm, this popcorn's really tasty. <laughs> You're talking about being an informant for the lilies. I don't, you can't really resist the surface level detect thoughts, Theodora, unfortunately. So Theodora was explaining that she's really close with Penny and you get this kind of the ghostly surface image of their last conversation. And it looks like Dora's being shady and you don't get like a, a video recording so you can exactly nail her to the board on this one. But you know that it's more substantial. You think that D Dora is in league at least. Screw it, just so that I can do this, I'm going to attempt to probe deeper. Oh, Christ, Muffins. You bitch. Oh, heck. I didn't know we were going to have party on party violence. No, not violence. She did just admit to being an enforcer for the lilies. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. Dora, wisdom saving throw to guard your thought. Oh, I also like how the character, this is basically Valtari trying to move suspicion away from her. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to like put someone in deeper water than me. 17! Alright. <laughs> so, the spell ends. I'm gonna point at her and go, She was trying to detect my thoughts! She's doing shady stuff with the lilies! No detecting thoughts at the table. <sighs> Roland just sort of, like, rolls his eyes, and then, like, you know, does the zone of truth cast on just the entire table here. Winifred floats over the table, and he says... Either we're going to be a family or we're not. If you don't want to be part of this, you can leave. This is my house, too. I have rights. I don't want to do crime. I want us to be friends. No detecting thoughts. Everyone behave. Or no jam for a week. I don't think it's fair that you called out my spell, but not, not Roland's, but okay. Zone of Truth's a little clingy, but it's not mean. <laughs> <sighs> so does anybody leave? Winifred's saying if you don't want to be part of this family, leave. No, I'm angrily eating popcorn, but I poured some jam on top of it to make Winnie happy. <laughs> he smiles. Wait, do they have mouths? He, he jelly smiles. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This 
this whole situation is getting already a bit out of hand here. So right away, we have a request to do a job where we have everything in our possession to resolve it. But of course, resolving will result in one of us being put into a mirror. Unless, as you said, Valtari, we pin it on someone else. There might be a chance that if we return things to Penny, we can reduce the sentence to it. I mean, I said Claire's the leader of it, uh, the Lilies now. We could probably negotiate something less, especially if they find out the stuff wasn't stolen with insidious intentions, but just for one component of it. I guess I'm just saying maybe we shouldn't assume that it's the mirror, because sometimes when you make assumptions on what's going to be the consequence, <laughs> you sort of make mistakes. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to say <laughs> flumps have mouths. I've just added a picture of Winifred to the roll 20 uh, to scale. Okay. <laughs> He's such a big boy. He's a thousand times bigger than everyone no else. No wonder you can make so much jam so quickly. <laughs> Look at his good jam mouth. Yeah, so zone of truth. I'm going to be honest. Um, I wouldn't have stolen all that stuff from Penny had I realized this is how this was going to go down and if I'd had that nice chat with Roland in which he gave me the sword, I probably would have done the done the thing where I would have spoken to all of you before I did it, but I can't turn that back now and I really don't want to go to prison, so um, I'll I'll, 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 I'll give the, the gem back if that's what we need to do but I really think we can pin this on someone and like someone that's okay with being imprisoned in a mirror or something. I still feel like that's an option. Well, we can either go about dealing with Penny in that situation first, or we can talk with Light first. Probably best we go talk to Warden Light, because I feel like he's going to have the information we need to work out a plan to get Alice into that mirror. All right, so uh, Winifred stays behind. He isn't thrilled about the way the conversation went, but nobody bailed on the family, so he he's still holding out hope that you guys are going to come together. He loves you so much. I'm going to give him a good pep pap on his head. Okay. He's trying. He's trying his best, guys. And then you he head out over to the big white tower with the orb on top that does the light and dark stuff. And uh, I assume you walk in the front doors into the kind of chapel area and nobody is there. Hey! <laughs> I, it always takes me by surprise when you decide to yell. Um, after uh, a couple seconds, you hear the sounds of chains rattling and uh, unlocking the door on the far side of the room. And Warden Light walks in to the first floor chapel. The door locks behind him. Uh, chains, chains, chains. Rattle, rattle, rattle. He says, ah, avant-garde. I hope you're doing well this morning. This evening. We didn't establish a time. That's fine. Time is a relative fixture in here <laughs> time is a flat circle what's up i hope you are doing well warden light as well as anyone can do under the circumstances is there something i can help you with you all seem uh concerned there is something that you could help us with it's a unorthodox request but important enough to bring to your attention v veltari is very specifically like staying out of saying anything right now because she's like I have a lot of secrets right now when we're in a room with someone we cannot lie to who it would be very bad if found out my secrets. Therefore, I'm just going to stay quiet. Going to stay very quiet unless I know what I'm saying is safe to say. Light says, uh, I would like to assist you in any way I can, Brother Hawklight. And then he just very deliberately turns his gaze to Zoe and says, Ah, Sister Legrand, I uh, haven't seen you in quite some time. How are you? I've heard you've had some troubles recently. It's been a... Uh... Interesting couple weeks, you could say. <laughs> I guess that is technically the truth. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it'd be weird if I was trying to lie to you or something. That would be most unsettling, Sister Legrand. He's kind of waiting for Roland to talk, but he's also just looking at Zoe a lot. Uh, one of the inhabitants of your, your many mirrors is a peculiar case of two souls in one body. Ah, the vampire and the necromancer. Yes. The request comes pertaining to that. Not a request for a release from that mirror of any sort, mind you. A request for someone to enter it, perhaps knowing fully what the consequences of such a thing is. Uh, persuasion check? Um, well, at least I do have a bonus to this roll here. 18 on the roll. Nice. So he doesn't immediately shoot you down. He says... As I'm sure you're aware, Brother Hawklight, that mirror is far too dangerous to just 
leave my custody at this point, uh, anyone who would be unlucky enough to enter it would be trapped for all eternity Mm -hmm. since it is being used in a way it was not intended. And while I feel some remorse about that, the necromancer and the vampire have done little to endear themselves to the world, as it were. So there's only so much sleep we can lose about it, I'm afraid. Well, there is one person who is losing quite a bit of sleep about it, though. The necromancer's wife. Trust me, Brother Hawklight. I know all too well how grief can hinder a person's judgment. It is one of the most powerful forces in the universe, the loss of a loved one. But unfortunately, as painful as it is, every one, every thing dies eventually. And we must make peace with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but isn't it fair to say that, like, you you explicitly told us that the people in these mirrors are not dead. So, like, the whole everyone has to die thing, her husband isn't dead. She can go to where her husband is. Like, is that not a an informed choice she can make? Her husband is dead. He's a ghost. <laughs> so I realize you're not trying to split hairs. He is actually dead. Oh, he's <laughs> dead, but you know what I mean? Like, he's not gone. Everyone does die, Warden. And that is exactly why Alice wants to be in a place where her spirit can be close to her husband when she passes. I understand your argument. And my heart breaks for Alice. It is truly unfortunate. However, it would be irresponsible of me to allow this to sway my commitment to keeping Ilium safe. I cannot allow any mirrors to leave this tower. I am sorry. Then don't allow it to leave the tower. Simply bring it out here within the safety of these walls and allow Alice to enter on her own free will. Imprisoning Alice in that mirror would be akin to murdering her. (laughs) Would you call that justice? Would it be murder or would it be suicide? Yeah, it's euthanasia. (laughs) Dora's not trying to be tactful. (laughs) It would be akin to sentencing her to death. However, it is a death that she would be content with. And it seems to be a way to provide her with comfort in a time of suffering that she is in. Okay, so this season so far, we've taken on the prison system. We've talked about the responsibility of gods to people. We've talked about the inherent qualities of justice. And now we're talking about the right to die. How's your comedy podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a sweet stained reference when I met Warren Light again by saying it's been a while, but it just didn't come up as naturally as I wanted. <laughs> and then I couldn't find out who the lead singer was. I was going to drop that in, but... <laughs> I know even Illmater's greatest positive necromancy cannot restore life to that which dies of old age. As I unfortunately have found myself saying a lot recently, everything and everyone dies eventually. You can postpone it, but it is inevitable. Mm -hmm. I want to float something by you, and I'm hoping I've picked this right up correctly from Roland, because this is mainly me just parroting things I'm pretty sure I heard Roland say. Sure. Ilmater, his whole deal was trying to reduce people's suffering. We 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 good so far. Am I am am I am I on track so far, Light? Yes, Ilmater is the god of suffering. He suffers in our place and gives us hope and joy when we find ourselves in suffering, correct? And would it be fair to say that in the absence of our husband, who is near, she knows where he is, but she cannot be with him? That Alice is suffering. I take your meaning, Sister Veltari, and I appreciate what all of you are doing. Uh, While I assume there is more to this than you're telling me, you've been truthful so far and- She gave us a mission to do this. This is why we're here. This is our job. Well, I appreciate the sentiment nonetheless. Unfortunately, while it may very well ease her suffering to do this thing, that is not a determinative factor. Ultimately, I have to balance duty, justice, and suffering. And there is simply no justice in condemning a woman to eternal torment. You have an issue on paper with with putting Alice into this mirror because it's unfair to put someone into a prison who has not committed a crime. Imprisoning her 
in that mirror would not serve justice. There are three kinds of justice. Retributive, the kind the man in the mask practiced, killing those who Hmm. he deemed worthy of it. Rehabilitative, which the triad espouses, where you try to fix those who have committed injustice so that they may join the just. And the final, most seductive kind of justice, the kind that creates more justice through its actions. A man steals a loaf of bread, you cut off his hand. Everyone after that point knows the cost and then will not steal. And so that justice perpetuates itself. We do not espouse this in the triad. It is tantalizing on paper to imagine a world where justice perpetuates itself infinitely, but in practice, dangerous and ripe for abuses. What what I'm getting from you here is that you're saying no to what I was kind of trying to lay out, which is we couldn't just get Alice to commit a crime and then ask you very nicely to put her in her husband's mirror rather than a separate one of her own. Correct. That would not rehabilitate her. It would not deter anyone. And it would not be retribution for what she has actually done. Although we only espouse one of those theories of justice, it would serve none of them. I need to be honest with you about something. You have to be. (laughs) Well, yeah, technically, yes. I think that if we don't do this, Alice is going to come down here and try to force her way into a mirror, whether you like it or not. The duty she feels towards her husband to do that is admirable. And if that is how she wishes to uphold those bonds, I encourage her. I implore her. She will not win, but that is what I would do if I was in her situation. You can't just like bend the rules like one time. (laughs) Sister Theodora, I am the rules. If you are the rules, then can't you make your own rules? Wouldn't it be the merciful thing to do? It would would make her happy? And have you never been in love? Of course, which is why I say, if I were in Alice's shoes, nothing on heaven or on earth would stop me from carrying out what she has planned. I would march in here and fight myself to the death. But if you have to put her in a mirror anyway, why wouldn't you just put her in the mirror with them? Everyone's fighting and arguing over the the specifics of the theology and the philosophy, and it's getting heated. People are yelling and pointing fingers. And then Zoe, next to you, you hear a voice. Oh, shit. (laughs) It's Lady Nim with her green veins and her eyes all over her skin. And she says, you know, this is why I gave you and Claire those missions to see if you were up to a task like this. My plan was, either you you two didn't go through with it, and you just ran off into the night, and I never had to think about you again, or you came through, and then I would send you to this tower to find the secrets I needed. So he's going to uh, say to Nim, but very quietly, can anyone else see or hear you, or is it just me? No, none of you see Lady Nim. She's in the sword, and this is just how Zoe's mind reconciles the fact that the sword is talking to her. Like, Lady Nim's specter walks over and just puts her hand through Roland's face, like, through the front of his head and out the back as she's just staring Zoe in the eyes, and Roland doesn't flinch because it didn't actually happen. So she's, like, trolling you, basically. And she's, like, running around, like, miming, cutting your friend's throats as she's, like, delivering this monologue to you, just being like, If you had just killed your sister, I would have said, good job. Now sneak into Light's tower, sneak through the door, find out what he's hiding. And now here you are, 10 feet from everything I wanted. Can you imagine my frustration? I imagine it's very difficult for you to reconcile with. I feel like we're here for a different reason. So, you know, I do not. Wow, I cannot overstate how much I don't care. Alice is a very nice lady. You should care. I wish I could just inject into you the extent to which I don't care. Just like make it a serum and just plunge it right into your eyeball. That was needlessly graphic and rude. As she's saying this, she's poking her finger in and out of Veltari's eye socket. (laughs) I like to think if someone's watching Zoe, just this mimery that she's essentially doing as she scans the room following (laughs) Lady Nim's crazy actions, but not saying anything. You're not going to out talk him. You're not going to out think him. Zoe, you think I didn't try that for 50 years? I'm not trying to outthink him. I'm trying to understand. (laughs) Nim just starts miming kicking light in the dick. (laughs) 
<laughs> She's just standing there and just doing it over and over again. Zoe's going to turn to uh, uh, Light, and she's going to say, Warden Light, what's the sacrum? The tower you're in currently? Are you all right, Sister Legrand? But what's the, you know, purpose of it? Beyond just being a prison, like, why is it an enormous tower and everything? He looks at you, and his mouth opens a little bit, and there's, like, this weird expression on his face, like, partially, like, what are you talking about? But also, like, I guess that's a good question. And then he puts a hand to his head, and his eyes close, and then he kind of just, like, shakes his head. And he's just, like, stunned for a moment. You okay there, bro? Uh, excuse me, um... <clears throat> Sorry, I know we were in the middle of a deep philosophical conversation, but you'll have to excuse me. I uh, have some business to attend to. And he turns and starts walking towards the door in the back and chains open it for him. And he's he's like walking away quickly, like holding his head. Uh, Zoe's going to shout out, Warden Light, I have one more question for you. He's still walking. What did you do to your memory? Chains shoot out of the door, grab him, and yank him behind it as it closes behind him and locks. Whoa. Yo, did y'all see that? I think we may have hit on something there. So he totally knows what's going on here, and we need to find out what he knows because he knows a lot that he's not telling us. Or he doesn't know, but he has conditions set up in place to prevent himself from knowing again, maybe, if it's something he erased. That's suspiciously smart for you to say, Zoe, but I like it. (laughs) You're right. That's uh, the tower magic thing. He is stopping the bad stuff from happening. (laughs) No, no, no. That's completely fine. I think it's actually better for for Zoe to be able to just sort of say that plainly. It's like... So question, how is the sacrum laid out? Like, is there only like the one door into the rest of the place that he just went through? Or is there like another path we could potentially take or can we just try to open the door <laughs> okay so uh, i just desc- i described this like episode four or five or something and it never came up again so i do want to describe it in a little bit more detail so there's one tower it's a big light it's a big lighthouse like structure that goes straight up when you open the big front doors it's like a chapel so there's like pews and then a pulpit and then behind that there's a single door it's always locked every time you've ever been in here it's been locked he has to unlock it when he wants to Mm. come into this room or wants to leave that's the only part of this tower any of you have ever seen i want to try to go up to the door and i want to see if fat boy slim can rust the the locks off or the hinges off yeah you don't even need to make a check fat boy slim can do whatever he wants to this door it's metal and it's locked by chains which are metal (laughs) oh fuck yes so yeah, she's gonna fucking she's like fat boy slip, and he just like shows up, and then like starts erasing the metal. As I assume, uh, right here, right now, starts playing in the background. Yeah, you you can do whatever you want to this door. You you cut through the chains, you can cut through the lock. The door can open right now, right here. Sweet Zoe, you open the locked door in the back of the sacrum, and it swings open. And it's hard to see what's on the other side right away because there's like a turn, but you can go in here if you want. Uh, well, she's going to turn to everyone else first and say, clearly there's something kind of going on with light and this tower and everything. This might be our best chance to try to find out some of what's going on here. Uh, detect magic. Yeah. Okay. So you detect magic and you're you're standing in the chapel part looking down, looking past the door into the room beyond. And the room on the other side of this door may as well be on fire. With detect magic. Oh god, there's so much magic! You remember when you looked at Garrick the Great's head and because the snowflake was inside, it was like looking into the sun? Yeah. That was like a warm night light glow compared to what's going on on the other side of the store. Ah, my eyes! (laughs) (laughs) Really fucking acting. That's some Emmy moment right there. (laughs) (sighs) So who's gonna look around? Is Lady Nim still around? she, She bugger off. No, she buggered off. She was just trying to antagonize you because you guys were talking about deterrent theory <laughs> with an angel. <laughs> She's like, you have a comedy podcast to do, fuckheads. Do you really want to try to go further into here? Zoe did pop the top on this Pringle. I feel like we don't know enough about what's going on, and there might be something like the tower seems to actively be keeping light from recognizing what he knows, so... Mm-hmm. It might not be something we could coerce out of him. We might have to kind of find it out for ourselves. All right. So you guys are going to walk through the open door? Roland's going to elect to go through first just to gauge what happens. So none of you are ambushed. Buckle in because there's going to be a bit of explanation of what you see because there's a lot. 
The first thing you notice when you walk through this door, the door that has been locked for 23 hours of podcast, is there is a spiral staircase going from the first floor all the way to the top. I don't know if you thought there was individual floors all along the tower. That was a perfectly fine assumption to make. It was wrong. There are only two habitable floors in this building. The first and last. So so you're saying there's no floor where you can get both purses and castanets. Okay. The staircase is especially notable because it is not like stones. They are floating pieces of a stained glass, like in a church. Individual pieces unconnected and floating in space, spiraling around this stairwell, which is essentially the other half of the tower. The chapel area was like halfway in, and then behind that door is the other half of this tower. The other half of this tower is all one staircase going up. Uh, it's not the only thing in this room. The staircase itself is spiraling around something. Uh, more specifically, there is a huge blue glowing column in the center of this staircase. It is like electric blue, and it is radiating. This is the source of the detect magic thing that Theodora saw, this blue pole. I'm just going to call it the spine. It's the spine of the sacrum. Is just ra- It's a huge rail that goes from the bottom to the top, and it's glowing radioactive blue wrapped in the stained glass staircase going all the way up to the top. As you look at the spine, you see all across its surface are symbols of gods. So you see the symbol of Ilmater, hands tied with a cord. You see the symbol of Tyr, uh, scales. You see the symbol of Torm. You see the symbol of the god of winter, the first frost. You see the symbol of the dragon god, which has not been named on the show, but is the one that blessed Alice's staff. You see the symbol of dozens of gods you don't know. All along its surface, from the bottom to the top, It is covered in these symbols, and they're all glowing. There's two more things you see in the stairwell. One is that there are just chains everywhere, just like hanging on the walls. Some of them are draped on staircases. Some are just floating in midair. Some are peeking out of portals. This is where the the source of the chains that he summons. They're just in this room. Mm -hmm. And the final thing you see is the walls of this room are covered, nearly totally covered in mirrors. Now, in episode one, I said the population is about 50. And, you know, people come in, but also people die. There's a high immigration and there's a high death toll. They cancel each other out. And while I think that math checks out, a lot of our listeners are like, something feels wrong about that. There should be more people. And I'm here to report your instincts were right. Because the amount of people who would naturally have to be trapped in these mirrors is astronomical. Nearly every surface of wall in here is covered in mirrors. Mirrors on mirrors on mirrors on mirrors. And you think they all have at least one person in them. (laughs) Good lord. I had had a question just on the the way up. Uh, There was all the the symbols of the gods. Mm -hmm. Did we see anything to do with Gonador? No. Gonador is notably absent. The four features of this room are the stairs, the spine, the chains, and the mirrors. And there's nothing else of note in here until unless you climb all the way to the top and you open the door that leads to the top floor. Hypothetically, then, by using some reasoning, I imagine we could figure that light is probably at the top (laughs) unless he decided to chill out in one of these prison mirrors for a period of time. Or he could teleport. I think if we turn around now, we're still going to be in a heck of a lot of trouble because... uh... We melted his door. Yeah. Yeah. So... One thing Zoe wants to do is she wants to take out her sword. Mm -hmm. And first thing she wants to do is like kind of like use it to like try to move some of the chains around a little bit. Oh, okay. Interesting. So you pull out a Gonador sword and you start prodding at the chains. Poke one, nothing happens. You poke a second one, nothing happens. And then you go to poke a third and it kind of moves out of the way. Like it doesn't want to be poked. And so you're prodding and trying to experimenting. And the conclusion you come to is that they are lightly enchanted to act semi-autonomously. So light usually controls them, but they're kind of magically programmed that they can take actions if they are programmed to think it's necessary. Like a smarter, like a slightly smarter version of Alice's bone guards. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you know what? They they work very much like the the skeleton kind of magic where they don't have sentience, but they are animated. Gotcha. Well, Zoe will report that. Yeah. 
And then she wants to stab her sword into the spine. Oh, hold on. Did you, though? No, she wouldn't do that, but she, I think she is going to try to move her sword closer to the spine. Just, to, like, not touch them, because mm-hmm. she's realized that touching things with the sword yeah. can be dangerous. <laughs> Zoe's a pyrotechnic who has a jar of nitroglycerin, and her first move in every situation is to shake it vigorously. <laughs> So you take out the sword of Ganador and you approach the spine with it. And as you start moving the tip towards it, you see um, black inky tendrils start to come off of the sword and reach towards it. All right. So desummoning the sword <laughs> and then moving as far away from it as she can. All right. So you guys are at the bottom of the stairwell. I want to go up. So you guys climb the individual pieces of floating stained glass, which act as the staircase. You're walking around the spine, this big glowing column in the center of the stairwell you see mirror after mirror as you're passing up and they're all different looking a little bit like they don't get too wild but there's some made out of like brass and some are bronze some are silver some are steel some of them have like different flourishes like clearly the person making them got bored with the original design and decided to get weird weird with it after a certain point and you're walking and you're walking and you reach the top there's a small landing and there's a door and on the other side of the door uh you can already hear like clanking and banging it's not like there's not like a struggle but you know there's the sound of activity on the other side is this door sealed with chains no this door is unlocked as far as you can tell somebody should do shave and a haircut no no (laughs) if you want me to i'll open it for you i won't (laughs) (laughs) thanks tora you're the best friend anyone could ask for yep doing my best Zoe's going to, uh, like, give a roll and a nod, and then I think step forward and open the door. All right. You open the door to the top floor in the sacrum. And what you are greeted by is the image of a painfully average domestic living room. Uh, There's a couch, and there are knickknacks, and paddy wax, and there's blankets, and cups on the ground, and (laughs) it just looks like... A, ra- a random, average, boring person lives here. There are two rooms that that go off in this main living area where no one is currently. One, you just hear the sound of like light shuffling with what sounds like textiles. And in the other, you hear uh, metallic sounds. So just like metal on metal. Once again, not violent or vicious or anything. Just clicks and clacks and adjustments to metal stuff. All right, well, yeah, we'll definitely have to check out that the chain room. I mean, come on. So you go towards the sound of the metal stuff? Yeah. So, Zoe, you go towards the sound of the metal, mm-hmm. and I think you, like, peek around the corner into that room, because there's, there's the living room and then there's two other rooms. So you go to one, the one with the metal, and you peek around the corner, and here's what you see. Okay. There is a teenage girl with pointed ears wrapped in a ghostly feathered serpent sitting at a workbench, and she is making custom jewelry. Now, Zoe went into that room. Dora wants to go look at the other one, the fabric-y, wrestle one. Theodora, you go into the other room, um, and you peek around the corner, and you see Warden Light has gotten into bed and made himself into a blanket burrito. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come back out and be like, guys, he's a burrito. <laughs> I'm thinking religion check. Once I see this person to get a sense of what it might mean. 28. Sweet baby Christmas. All right, so you look into this room with a 28, and you know immediately that the totem animal you were looking at is a quattle. Um, Obviously, Dungeons & Dragons just borrowed Quetzalcoatl Mm -hmm. from Aztec mythology, but it's a feathered serpent. You may recall Sylvia mentioned giving one out to a mysterious teenage girl with pointy ears, um, who is clearly this person. Mm -hmm. Um, And it is just kind of coiled around here just like lounging and she like it occasionally it like reaches its head down and like picks up a screwdriver and like hands it to her and they're just kind of working together as a team from the back of this person's head you would say the the ears are gnomish but the skin tone is not on this person with you think that's not really a religious check austin uh it is (laughs) she half angel she is half angel or in dd terms asamir or in Bible terms, Nephilim. Right. So basically, mm. it's the counter to the tiefling in some fragrances where it's positive plane touched in this respect. So, oh, well, 
that explains one of the questions I wanted to ask Warden Light. Let me just cross that one off. <laughs> uh, the serpent bends its head down and picks up uh, a half-finished mirror and puts it down on the table in front of this girl, and she begins working on it. Can I backtrack slightly to where we saw all of the, the multitudes of mirrors? Yeah, you can go back to the stairwell. While this is going on, I want to go back to the stairwell and just do like a perception check and see if I can tell anything about, is there anything that sets any of these mirrors apart from each other? Is there anything, Mm -hmm. just is there anything of note when I'm looking through these mirrors trying to see what I can find? 28. Sweet Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Roll 20, what do? Um, So yeah, with a 28, you walk back into the stairwell and you have an immediate perfect perception of the situation. And the situation is this. Uh, It appears that there was a long line of standard mirrors made in the same way for a while. And then at some point they change and then they start getting experimental. And then it's just like bejeweled. It's just bedazzled. And it's just like, whatever. Like they, they, they never drop in quality there just comes a point where they start being uh, artistic rather than simply functional the one that we just saw being made in the in the room upstairs was that on the artistic end of the scale absolutely she's putting all kinds of flourishes i uh, remember sylvia was paid in custom jewelry uh this person knows how to do cool metal crafting stuff how easy would it be to estimate Judging by this sort of gradation of how fancy and how decorated they get, if I was going to try and guess which one might be, you know, Bumbershoot, is there any way I could I could ballpark that using this grading scale? You can think, oh, I'm confident it's within this quadrant. Yeah, correct. Zoe wants to kind of like gauge how far away she is and like eyeball essentially to make sure that if she says something... That snake won't just lash straight out forward and bite her face off? If you want to stay out of snake range, you can, yes. Okay, she wants to try to stay out of snake range. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, she's just going to, like, lightly say, like, hello? And she's going to have her, like, hands already kind of, like, out in, like, a not not threatening way. (laughs) All right, you say hello. And the Asamir girl turns and looks at you. And for a moment... She is stone still. You, you could mistake her for a statue, the, how much she's not moving. And she goes, oh, golly. And she falls backwards out of the chair, tumbling into a pile of half-finished mirrors. <laughs> and the snake immediately coils around her defensively and strikes a posture like a cobra, as in, stay back, my person. I, I, I'm not here for, for anything like that. I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you or anything. Dad! Dad! Oh, uh, okay. We'll do that then. <laughs> Can I cast invisibility on myself, like, now? <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, Veltara, you're invisible. Uh, War- <laughs> Warden Light uh, bursts out of the room, still blanket burrito, because as far as he knows, she just, like, stubbed her toe, so he's not, like, in battle mode. But then he sees you all in his living room, and chains begin to pour out of portals all around you. None, none of you are attacked but they're letting you know they're there. And he says, what is the meaning of this? Uh, nice burrito. It looks really soft. Uh, sorry to wake you. (laughs) He ignores you, Dora, and just says, Grace, are you okay? Did they hurt you, honey? All we did was say hi, but whatever. The the Asimir girl, apparently named Grace, uh, stands to her feet, uh, brushing all the mirrors off her, and says, uh, I fell, and ow, I hurt my ow. I'm okay. It's fine. It's good. I'm good. Uh, didn't mean to cause any issues. I've fallen on my, my owl before and heard it, so I, I know that situation all too well. <laughs> Light says, did you break into my house? Break is a strong word. I want to preface this with I'm sorry, but Warden Light, something's going on, and I think even you don't realize it. And you're being really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to be weird. You are criminals. Everyone makes strength checks except for Veltari as uh, chains attempt to bind you. Can I, like, mist really fast? <laughs> yeah, you can just turn into mist. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that. 15? Six. All right, so you are wrapped up, Roland. We'll see how that resolves in a second. Zoe? <laughs> nope, I botched, so I lose. Okay, sweet. Um, a chain flies at you, and Fatboy Slim slices it in half. 
Oh, that's so dope. And it does nothing. Uh, only Roland is bound up. Uh, Veltari is invisible, so she is not attacked. And Dora is missed. So Light says, how dare you? All of you. Warden Light, what did you do to your memory? Sister Legrand, this is not about me. You don't get to ask questions here. I think there is some room for questions. I mean, I didn't want to break into your place and find things out, but clearly there's something that's preventing you from talking about these things. More than that, there's legitimate issues here that we kind of need to discuss. I I don't... There's something very wrong going on with this situation in this town. Yeah, we're infested with thieves and criminals and murderers and people who pretend to fight for justice but are sneaking around committing all sorts of unthinkable violations of personal space frankly i mean yeah but you know you also kind of like prevent us from ever lying in a way that's kind of a violate let's not get into semantics here <laughs> actually or like i want to show you something real quick and she's gonna like try to like walk past him there are chains all around you ready to strike but he doesn't hit you if you're not gonna strike first no, she's she's like she has her hands up essentially, and she's gonna walk towards like the the staircase essentially, mm-hmm. and she's gonna pull out her sword and hold it towards the the spine. Oh, okay. So you're gonna show that the sword is trying to touch the spine. Yes. So you start walking out the door first of all, and he doesn't follow you immediately. The, he waits, and the chains like scoop up Grace and bring her to him, and she like is set down beside him so he can shield her as he walks to follow you, and he says, "What." are you doing put that away and she will she'll put it away and she's gonna say don't you think it's weird like this sword is a a manifestation of ganador clearly he wants to touch it he wants to get something out of it it's what he did with lady nim the spine yeah i mean he says the spine so that's in character why everyone's gonna refer to it as that he says the spine clearly contains untold magics what creature wouldn't want its hands on that i don't think that's special to the eyeball guy that Dora is friends with but it's one who's specifically trapped here he's in Ilium that's very disconcerting I mean clearly he hasn't manifested yet if he is here so I would assume he's actually in a pocket dimension that is in here rather than like hiding behind your house or something once again semantics Uh, so what you're saying to me is there's a threat to my personal property and it comes from a sword only you have no, because that really puts me in a bad position. What I'm trying to say, Warren Light, is that there's things going on and you did something to your own memory to prevent you from remembering everything. That maybe you had to make some decision and you chose to keep part of it away as a way to ease your conscience. Or I, I don't know exactly, but Lady Nim told us directly about this. Okay, uh, Dora will demist. Uh-oh. And be like, yo, before you chain me. We're not here to do anything. We just want to talk to you because you're being weird and elusive, even for you. Please do not chain me. That would be lame as fuck. Uh, crit! I crit to chain you! Damn. Don't tempt roll 20, Lauren. Damn. I, I should just, like, not come out of hiding then. <laughs> Let, let's go with that. Roland and Theodora are wrapped in chains and put on the couch. Veltari is invisible and Zoe is free. At this point, uh... Grace goes like over into like the kitchenette in the dining room and like brings Roland and Dora tea because you guys are like wrapped up, wrapped up, but your hands are like free ish. They're bound together, but you can she puts a teacup in your bound hands mm. and she says, uh, oh, golly, sorry. I don't know. what's how ha- I don't know. You. Oh, I'm just going to go over here. Bye. Thank you. Uh, OK, wait, are, uh, are you guys the true name people? Yeah, I think so. I'm assuming. Wait, what do you mean by true name people? Oh, gee willikers, you shouldn't have done that. That was bad. That's bad juju. Well, I mean, I didn't do it. That that was me. If anyone getting hit with that, I, I, I did it. Are you talking about Lady Nim and, uh, you know, Barry? Uh, I mean, I don't know about that, but you, like, that's not even magic. That's like some, something else. You shouldn't do that. That's danger. And like light cuts her off and says, enough. Stop. Light, I just want to point out that I demissed it as a show of goodwill and you wrap me up in chains and I feel like that's not cool. I just want to open a dialogue here, you know? And you broke into my house and threatened my daughter. I did not. Nobody threatened her. All we Literally all we did was say hi. The only reason you guys are not in mirrors for all of eternity is because I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. 
Please do not complain about my compassion right now. Now, what are we going to do? Forget this ever happened. Anyone else have a suggestion? <laughs> Light, I want to affirm my apologies for my lack of sensitivity earlier when it came to transgressions in referring to you by an improper name. I now better understand why that name means so much to you. In my mind, I wanted Zoe to be like, oh, snap, I just got it. <laughs> did Zoe just get it or did Chris just get it? <laughs> it's a little bit of both. Okay, cool. Um, so Roland, you apologize for misnaming him repeatedly. And he just look, looks from person to person who's chained up in here. And he says, I've kept this private for her own safety. And now all of you have threatened that. This place is dangerous. It is filled with thieves and killers. And all I ever wanted was to keep her safe. From my perspective, you are now each the most dangerous people in Ilium. No, oh, I'm an idiot. You don't have to worry about me. Yeah, no, I'm a I'm total doofus. <laughs> <laughs> As if it takes intelligence to blab? I don't really even understand everything that's happening here right now. I didn't come in to find some big secret out about like having a kid or something like that. I, I'm trying to find out if there's something wrong with you, Warden Light, so that we can help fix it. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is we're all trying to lift this barrier, right? But you, you're being really... Listen, if you had just been straightforward with us about some things, like maybe we wouldn't have... I don't know. It's a whole... Uh. <laughs> when, Dora, when you say about lifting the barrier, Grace looks excited all of a sudden, and she says, oh, do, you guys, do you guys know how to... And Light cuts her off and says, Listen, we're not going to talk about me. We're not going to talk about the Aurora. We're here to talk about you. You guys have done this. I didn't force this. Don't make this about me. You did walk out mid-conversation. I understand why you're afraid. There is, of course, many forces that are evil, malicious, and harmful, both within and outside the Aurora. But staying inside forever won't change that. Brother Hawklight, that is not your call to make. You do not get to tell me how to conduct my family business. You have no idea what you're talking about. I respect what you've done for the triad, but you are out of your depth here. Is it your place to decide the business of everyone else simply because of your family? The reason I enlist the assistance of people like you is precisely so I am not a tyrant in here. I could do all of your work myself. I choose not to because I don't want to trample on your agency. The only choices I make are for me and mine. But don't you pass final judgment on basically everything and everyone? The mirrors allow people to pass judgment on themselves. I am completely removed from that process. Is Grace in the room right now? Um, when she got cut off, she kind of retreated. She's like hiding in the kitchenette behind the counter, but she's in the room. I kind of want to go over to the kitchenette to roughly where she is. And I'm going to use Thaumaturgy to make my voice appear like it's coming from the opposite side of her to where I actually am. Uh-huh. Uh, just, just in case, just as a, as a nice safety measure. And I just want to whisper to her, please try and stay calm. Uh, persuasion to keep her calm before we go any further. Let's see how persuasive I was. Uh, where's my... 18. Uh, you startle her and she drops the kettle, but the feathered serpent catches it before it hits the ground, drawing attention. Okay. And she remains calm. We think your father might know more about taking down this barrier than he's telling people. Dad doesn't like when we talk about it. He, uh, he used to know everything, but he erased it because it made him sad. We think that what he knew is the secret to getting us all out of here. Are you willing to help us? Uh, persuasion? 16. Good, but not turned against her dad good. She says, I, I want to see the outside world, but I, I don't want to hurt my dad. Look, I, I, I'm not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do, but I think that what your father knows is the only way we're ever going to get out of here. If there's anything you feel comfortable doing to help, it would mean a lot to us. Like I know I, one or two spells would be potentially helpful here from my standpoint here. I don't know which one, but I'm just double checking something about the casting for both. Do you want Arcana check too? Because I think I know what you have planned. 17. 
All right, 17 on Arcana for Roland. Uh, my assumption is you're thinking about using Remove Curse or Dispel Magic. Correct. And so the way I would uh, analogize this is if you cut someone's arm off, you don't say, well, that's a that's an arm removal curse or that's a, a magical disarmament. Their arm is missing. So if the spell removed the memory, which if we assume memory is made up of neurological dendrites connecting, if they just blasted that apart, it's not something that can be removed. It's just missing unless it's something that's like quarantined. You don't know which way the spell works. I just wanted to let you know it's like a 50-50 shot if he blew it out of his own head or put it in a little box and hit it in his head. I can do dispel magic even though I'm bound up because my hands are free enough to do the somatic components, right? You'll have to put the tea down. I know I know it's a big sacrifice, but you'll have to sacrifice the tea. Roland will put down the tea. It looks to Zoe for actually it looks to Zoe. If there's any, well, like saying like if there's anything you can do to help me at this moment, please. He mutters under his breath, I'm sorry, and then whispers and does the gesture to cast Dispel Magic with the target being Warden Light. All right, so the DC is 16. Roland? Damn it. 14? So you try to blast Light with Dispel Magic, and it hits him, and he resists it. He, like, throws his arms up, and he's, like, wrapped in a cocoon of chains, uh, just as an automatic response to someone trying to hit him with magic. And he does not like this, but obviously it was not an offensive attack. So, Zoe, he's going to try to wrap you up, because you're the only unwrapped person in the room. While he's focusing on Zoe, Dora's going to try to cast Yash's form. <laughs> okay. Z- so, Theodora escapes. Z- Zoe, uh, I <laughs> crit again! I didn't crit, damn. Oh my god, all right. I want to whisper to her quickly and just go... Look, my friends are in danger. I don't want this fighting to happen. Will you please trust me so that I can try and stop this all? Uh, persuasion. 24. Natural 20. Natural 20. <laughs> so Veltari crits, and crits are very interesting in the situation. So you say you don't want this fighting to happen. She doesn't want this fighting to happen. Chains are going everywhere. Theodora escapes. Everyone's getting wrapped up. Light is losing it. Yeah. Grace sends her Quattle. To back to her room, it flies off, and then it flies back in its mouth. It has the first frost. Oh, this is not what I was going for, but this is interesting. Uh, and it throws it to her. She holds it in her hand, and suddenly there is just a storm of ice and hydra heads as this entire floor of this tower gets swifty. Dora, you're a mist. You're going to freeze and die if you do not unmist, because this room is filling with ice. God damn it. <laughs> Okay. You can leave the room. Yeah, I'm just gonna go chill in the in the like the lobby. So you float back out into the stairwell? Yeah. Alright. Veltari, you're behind Grace, that's fine. Uh Warden Light, Roland, and Zoe, you guys are like frozen in place and there are just hydra heads all around you. Just menacing the three of you. And Grace says, No fighting. <laughs> We're gonna talk this out like grown ups. Dad, don't wrap up the guests. Guests, don't break into places. Invisible people, come out and talk. Gas person, are you still here? Yeah, just don't chain me again. I uninvisible next to Grace. I'm going to make some hot cocoa. Sit down. And I sit cross-legged on the floor. I sit down on the the sort of breakfast nook area table that that I was just nearby. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Grace goes off to make hot cocoa and light like grumbles he's like half frozen but it doesn't seem to be bothering him and he just like sits down like with a grumpy bear face on and the chains relax around roland and zoe hey light sorry about all this (laughs) you're going to be very sorry if we don't work this out i can't let you guys just walk around town knowing the secret didn't you like remove part of your own memory can't you just like make us forget it like you did to yourself Hmm, I hadn't considered that. I guess I could just erase all of your memories. Thank for the thank you for the suggestion, Dora. All of them? All of them? That seems a little unnecessary, just the one about your kid. Don't be unreasonable. Erasing all of our memories doesn't seem like you're uh, to fit in with your trio of punishments. I'm sorry, there was a misunderstanding. I meant all of them that are relevant. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't want you drooling out on the in the field. Okay. Also don't poke around in my brain. But you don't know a spell like that, do you? Lady Nim taught it to me. 
Yes, I do. So you admit that there's the possibility that you have had access to this spell and you could have used it before on yourself. It's not just a possibility, it's a fact. This is going to sound like a stupid question. Do you remember what it is that you've forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> the question sounds paradoxical, but it's actually fairly simple to grasp. Thank you. Yes, I. whatever was the purpose of all of this, the tower, the barrier, it was too much. I, I didn't want to know. It hurt too much to question it and to think about it. She She's very curious, and it was simpler just to remove it from the equation. Okay. How How is this as a deal to try and get us some kind of, of, of closure and some kind of agreement here? I don't know about the rest of this group, but I would be happy to make a trade. You will raise my memory of grace, and in exchange, we undo your memory erasal. You tell us what the deal with this town is, we carry that burden, and you re-erase your memory. You pass, you pass the burden on to us, but we forget grace. Laura's thinking in four dimensions here. Fuck, I'm very into that. I love it when you guys get creative. Yo, yo, that's very ill mater of you. <laughs> I, yeah. I've been trying to learn from you, Roland. I'm trying to pick this up as I go, this whole uh, ill mater thing. Make a persuasion with advantage? Because he's still upset. You guys broke into his house and you scared his daughter, who is the only thing he cares about in the world. Okay, first roll, I got a 15. Well, she's having a great time. Second roll, 16. 16. So 16 is good. Is it win the campaign good? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right, Light. It isn't my place to tell you how to maintain and run your family. But at the same time, I can't help but be compelled to alleviate any one of their suffering in the ways that I can. And you know that. Word and light looks to each member of the avant-garde in turn, just like studying your face and trying to like ascertain your intentions and think about who you are as people. Um, Veltari has proven herself. Roland has proven himself. Uh, Zoe he has questions about. And Theodora he actively thinks is probably bad. <laughs> um, she has done nothing to dispel that. But the deal makes sense. He gets what he wants out of it. You guys get what you want out of it. Secondly, the only other, other thing I could think of is like asking if there's anything Grace wanted in exchange for this. Ask what she'd like. Because she's interested about the outside world, but Light does not seem interested in allowing her to, be, to directly experience it. She, if she knows that the barrier is down, she'll probably try to run away from home, is partially what I think. That's one of the reasons why... That light doesn't want the barrier to go down at all, period, because it means... His daughter might leave, yeah. His daughter might leave, and he will lose the last thing that, that is from Lucas, because Lucas cannot be brought back from the dead, because he died of old age. So, Warden Light finishes his cocoa dramatically, <laughs> thinks deeply, and says, Your proposal would accomplish all of our aims. However, I am going to need an assurance. As you all have doubtlessly put together, the true reason that I have not personally undertaken the vast responsibility of venturing into each and every mirror to help rehabilitate those in my care is because I cannot risk leaving Grace alone. If even one inmate was not open to rehabilitation, I would be abandoning her. That is simply unacceptable. However, Regardless of what you may think of me, I do genuinely want to help the people in the tower. With that said, I will agree to your arrangement to give you the information you need and take from you the information I do not want you to have. However, I need something first. What do you need? Rather, who do you need in this case? <laughs> Roland's already ahead of the game. Uh, yes, Brother Hawklight, as I'm sure you have put together... There is someone I need you to recover from me. Someone who I imprisoned with a very heavy heart and have longed to see again for a while, but could not risk retrieving. You don't mean Lucas, do you? No. Lucas is from a powerful family of gnomes, the Rosemary's, who, who did not take kindly to his elopement <laughs> and sent after him someone to retrieve him from me, as it were, and he could not be deterred. He followed us here, and I had no choice but to imprison him. 
he's not a bad man. And I wish very much to free him again. Were that I could do it myself, but this is an opportunity, clearly, to right the wrongs of the past and benefit everyone. So, my condition for this arrangement you have suggested is I need you all to enter the mirror and retrieve a family friend. A family friend? Well, what, well, what is their name? Well, S- Sketch, why don't you tell me? Uh, the family friend is a, a, a ladrin. His name is Martis Valamin. His name is Martis Valamin. Do you accept? I, I'm fine with this, this condition. One thing I would request is, is there anything that we can do uh, for Grace after all this is done, even if we don't know of her? All I would ask of you is to continue what you have been doing and making this town safer. Hopefully, one day she would be able to walk the fields of Ilium and not fear for her safety. That's all I've ever wanted. Okay. Can, can, can I uh, can I drop my uh, my my counter request at you, light? <laughs> All right, counter proposal. Okay, if you if currently we're doing memory for memory, and you've got a request about a mirror. That's what negotiating from a position of strength is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If we if we want to get everyone happy on both sides, getting everyone equal stuff, are you happy to put Alice in the mirror? She wants to go in. Warden Light stands up, walks over to Veltari. And sticks a hand out. I stick my hand out as well, ready to do the handshake. Warden Light says, You've got yourselves a deal, avant garde. That is not where I thought this episode was going when it started. As always, I'd like to thank Overclock Remix for our theme music, including Acoustic Jam with the Lucifer Alpha, an arrangement of Biohazard from Snatcher, Mystic Chemicals, an arrangement of Mystic Cave Zone and Chemical Plant Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog, and Simply Be Grooved, an arrangement of Simple and Clean from Kingdom Hearts. If you want to help support the show, you can contribute at patreon.com slash austinyorski, you can find Chris at patreon.com slash weekly manga recap, and you can find Laura at patreon.com slash Laura K Buzz. Executive producers for the month of August 2017 are Kerstine Haslinger, Jade, Extellaris, Joseph Tombrello, The Cult of Gorfanax, Irving Royale, Ken Fursell, Andrew Grothen, Paul Mullen, Luke Powers, Michael Goodell, Brent, Anthony Savier, Aki Savalainen, Iso, the Paladin's Wife, Florian, Charm Wilkie, Komano, The Future Mrs. and Mr. Hadsell, Dominic Bowden, Melissa Nielsen, Don, Eugene T., Connor Reynolds, Sarah Likens, Pruitt Holcomb, Artemis BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Bristol, Francois V., Tarka, Shyness, Dennis Pancake Detlefsen, Ripter Stormwolf, Miko from Finland, Dennis Bengston, Josh Mosier, Indigo Van Dane, Sydney Marzing, Just a Jester, John Potts, Kevin Dobbins, Savard and Akrasimova, Brady Warner, Kitty Foe, James Neely, Marissa Donaldson, Melanie Joe, Lana Seawolf, Toby Gleason Stack, Ruby Offer, Matthew Weber, Sarah Hanley, Melissa Booker, Cameron Abbas, Dylan, Gary Sayon, Anna Stulfar, Sean, the host of Funk Dunk Plays, Giorgio Renna, Harrison Andrew, Kevin Sidlow, Christopher Charlo, Jorit, Viger Arnston, Cody Jackson, August Rue, Athos, and Ingmar Gremmen. Even if you can't contribute directly, you can always help support the show by finding us on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else podcasts are uploaded, and like, subscribe, or just tell your friends. 
You'd think I'd be better at advertising by now, but even after seven years, I have no idea how to get people to listen to my stuff. Maybe I'll figure it out after another seven years. By which time, this show will be about laser sword fighting goblins on the surface of the sun.